All right, ladies and gentlemen, good morning, good morning. It's your boy Dave coming back at you live. It's a happy, fast money Friday. Hope you guys have a fantastic night of sleep. And here we are for another brand new trading day. It's our last trading day of the week. Looking forward to closing the day on a good note here. So, <coughs> excuse me, let's get into the market news. And then we'll jump right into our watch list. We got Lordy, Lordy, the Dow hit 40,000. The Dow Jones Industrial Average briefly jumped above 40,000 for the first time, although it ended the day slightly lower back at 39.869.38 points. Still, the intraday high is the culmination of a bull market that began back in October 2022. And the S&P 500 and the NASA Composite also hit new records before falling to end the day. The achievement is a testament to the powers of capital formation and innovation. Profit growth and economic resilience, said John Lynch, Chief Investment Officer at Com uh, Comerica Wealth Management. Blah 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 blah. All right, well that none of that stuff matters for us. It, it, you know, markets just slow right now for us. I mean, futures market and as well as the stock market, earnings season going on. I mean, this is just what it is. So I don't care if it's Joe Blow or John Lynch, whoever it is, saying it's a great market. It's uh, not the case so we're gonna have to be you know really staying put and make sure that we are uh you know waiting for that uh um you know waiting for our, our our you know good moments you know make sure that we're not taking too much trades here and all that so you know getting into the watch list of things we got ffie here this morning that i want to get into since this is currently uh been you know one of the well, very few stocks this morning that did hit PT. You know, we did get the 275 and then uh, the breakout to 285 so far. So it did hit that mark so far. So uh, we'll be seeing if we can get the bigger uh, move up, if we can get the VWAP roll. So <clears throat> right now, FFIE, uh, we don't have any new news this morning. Again, as you know, Fridays are known to be days where a lot of companies are not going to release hot press releases. So um, that's something to keep in mind as, as the weekend and you know, traders are just not going to be as um, that active. But let's kind of look into the company FFIE real quick. By the way, NQ is dropping up nicely here. If you guys are seeing my charts here, we did get a nice crack. I already hit the pink dev line and we are making our path to the next uh, line here to the VWAP. So just something to take, uh, keep in mind here. FFI is a USA auto manufacturer company at 37 million in flow. And so it's a mid flow stock. Again, no news. Um, it is holding up. Okay. I just would watch at the market opening here at the Lower high breakout out of this downtrend line and then use a 275 line again. So make sure you guys are keeping an eye on that one. Other than that, I have Duo next. D-U-O. This is a number one gainer currently trading at 163. There is a play on Duo this morning for the break of 165. So 165 is like right there. And we just did break to about 174 so it looks like it has a little bit of a resistance at 174 um so we're hoping that this 165 does become solid support and then we get the nice you know continued move on up so we'll see if we can get that uh going on duo now if this is a chinese real estate company and i think the float is relatively pretty high um it doesn't say it but i'm pretty sure it's a pretty higher float stock so it's not a low flow i don't believe but we'll keep our eye on duo here for the 165 candle break again um news wise we don't have any new news on this company either this morning <clears throat> all right moving forward i have akan next this is the top second gainer it's a micro penny stock trading at 32 cents a share um Pretty much, you know, made a lower high from the pre-market high up there, which was like at 38 cents. Okay. And now we're at 32. Just got rejected at 36. So, you know, really mainly I'll be watching for this VBAP roll to come back up towards 36 and then back to the pre-market high. Okay. Again, there's no news on AKAN, United Kingdom Healthcare Company. They're uh, 28 million in float. And 
Um, this one came out with news a little bit towards end of the day yesterday. It received a notice of non-compliance from NASDAQ. <laughs> so uh, that's the news. And then, you know, I got two more, BNRG and FA. J, uh, BNRJ is a uh, BNRG, excuse me, is right here currently trading at $3 and 17 cents. Um, again, it's going to need a lot more volume for this to get kicked back up to the view app. So, um, I don't really have a whole lot of, you know, excitement towards stocks this morning since yesterday. I mean, just overall week has been kind of blah for the stock market, but Israel utility company, 8.3 million in float. Uh, it, it had uh, the Bren Miller's project pipeline expanding to 49 projects, representing over 500 million potential volume in 12 industries across 13 countries. So this one does have a brand new press release. Says it's a low flow. Uh, the only thing you have to keep in mind is an Israel company. So they are known to be very pumpy dumpy. So, you know, I think maybe BNRG coming down this low is potentially presenting a nice low risk opportunity around three dollars and then start looking for that momentum to come back in so i wouldn't be surprised if bnrg starts you know kind of wedging out of the downtrend line here and then starts kind of making a move back on up market's gonna open up here in 30 seconds flj here is a stock that i'm watching as well on the watch list just in case if it does decide to break one dollar again nothing really special to this guy this morning but you know the one dollar breakout does lead to nice breakouts no news low float all right folks here we go market is opening up here in a few seconds let's have a great day here and uh not surprising that NQ is on a downtrend here, bouncing from the VWAP at the moment. So let's see if the VWAP holds or not. Okay, here we go. That is a big steep further down on NQ, and we are approaching the oversold territory. Okay, so right now, uh, NQs are already kind of into the VWAP, and I'm gonna wait because I mean, it's making lower highs and lower lows. But, you know, I think the VWAP is going to be definitely tough. Okay, not a whole lot of bang here. The market opening. Um, I'm just gonna watch here because you know NQ's up ten points. Uh, market's just kind of sitting a little, a slight in the green. But again, I'm I'm just giving a couple more minutes here to see what's gonna happen. Uh, Greenhorn says Peggy showing some life. I think Duo is going to get a VWAP roll. I would pay attention to Duo, guys. Watch, we're watching for VWAP roll. I don't think uh, Duo's done yet. It's number one gainer, 32 million volume traded low. Uh, I'm not really sure what the float is on this Duo. Uh, I think it is a lower float, but on Finvis, it's not showing. So we'll see. All right. So it looks like, you know, I, I, I think we're going to see the uh oversold territory here shortly so we should be making a lower low if this VWAP cracks again so a new low of the day should happen here unless this candle decides to hold the VWAP all right so duo watch that 165 uh right now 160 is where the VWAP is so you want to see that nice pop up into the VWAP back to the VWAP build support and then you want to see that going for a new high of the day
Yeah, you do well, folks. Look at that opening market high. Like I said, worth watching for the VWAP roll. You just look at it and then you see, and it's halted up. So Duo is now halted up. So good job if you guys decided to tap on that right there. Duo halted up. Uh, NQ just needs to crack this uh, this VWAP here, which looks like it is trying. But still got one more minute left. So that, that full body really needs to close below that 57. Then we should be coming down to the pink deadline eventually. Okay, nice continued flush down. Waiting for a duo for the unhalt. Got twenty five seconds left on this candle. Okay, so we are still plunging down, folks. So I think we are going to see continue lower lower highs and lower lows since we are still below VWAP. Remember, the Bulls got their pink deadline, so Bears are going to want their pink deadline, folks. So just keep that in mind. FFIE is also uh, coming back up towards 275, so be on the lookout for that. Keep in mind, Duo is up 323%. That's so if we get this uh, breaking back above 169, we should be able to see that uh, bigger move here. Um, I mean, look how Duo came all the way down here into the, uh, you know, before market opening. So this is looking good, looking good for a setup for a bigger pop. I think we might be able to get two plus today here. We keep getting a pretty decent bounce, but uh, let's see here coming up to the 18667 line. Wow. 
Duo unhalted. Duo unhalted. Here we go. Just hit the line at 18667. That's the 14 EMA. That's where shorts are going to come back in. Okay, duo unhalted. And then it might just get halted again at 163 this time. We've been seeing that a lot this week where it just kind of halts and then instantly halts again. I would still be careful here on NQ. We're so close to going red and uh, just hit that 14 EMA. A lot of traders like to go for a balance and then sell into the 14 EMA. And then what happens? They also get shorts coming in there as well. So I think with the bears, let's see here at the pink deadline still in case if it does get this thing now cracking below it back at 18656 and then back down to 18628, which is where the pink deadline is currently showing at. So we'll see. The only thing is it is in the oversold territory, but if you look back here, we did get that even below all the way towards 20 RSI. So just watching that one as well. All right, let's go back to FFIE since uh, Duo's kind of halted. I know FFIE has been a very popular meme stock, the new one now, apparently. So FFIE is looking good from the 275 to a new high of the day, and we are going to wait for the unhold at, uh, I think, 9.43, 40 seconds. <laughs> Um, uh, just FYI, I might have a little bit of a uh internet connection issue this morning, just because yesterday, last night we had a tornado here in Houston, and uh things got kind of busted. So, um, people in Texas got kind of hit by this tornado. So. So far, I'm staying safe, but the uh, internet, I'm hoping, is is uh, the going to be okay. If not, I have the hotspot, but it's just not as strong as the regular Wi-Fi, obviously. Um, NQ going red right now, guys. We're dipping back to the red. Thanks, Green Hornet. Um. Two more minutes until FFI gets unhalted, guys. So, like I said, my top two game plays are going to be Duo and uh, FFI. But top two currently for me, uh, FFI and Duo. Uh, market is starting to go bearish a little bit. Spy just dipped to uh, losing gains, and uh, they're losing gains. I mean, it's not surprising. It's Friday. There's no news plays. Um, uh, yeah. I mean, the only thing maybe to keep in mind is like at 10.15, we have um, just a little speaker, but it's nothing, nothing huge. It's not like Jerome Powell speaking, just an FOMC member. Wall or speeding at 10 15, but I don't think that's something we should be that concerned about. Um, okay, should be getting unhealthy here in FFI. Wow, 348 up halt right now showing at the moment. Three forty-eight up halt right now showing for FFIE. Uh, three thirty-six looks like they lowered it down, but either way, right now we are coming back 
down after that quick push up to three dollars that's going to be the natural whole number resistance but it still has a shot because we're still holding above some decent support lines here 270 here uh 75 as long as it holds we should be able to see three plus stock should be coming up to 100 percent, up 80 percent right now so i think it's got a good shot for ffie to pop up keep in mind meme stock like gamestop and amc earlier this week we did get a little jump but it hasn't followed and then we got a new meme stock like ffie that did get popular so it has been obviously like i said we play this since 48 cents if you guys remember 48 or like 60 there were multiple plays on ffi i think well, maybe one or two but it's all the way up here now so obviously this is a very popular stock if you kind of go back and look at how far we start from and how much is up but uh, yeah we should be making another lower low is what i'm expecting here on nq since uh it's just a bearish day right now. Market's going to rest. Spy is going to follow. Uh, NASDAQ is going to follow SPY usually. Dow Jones, we don't care about Dow Jones. All right, so we should be seeing the the coming down to the deviation two line here. So this line cracks, so we should be coming to the, the pink dev line. Yeah, don't try to catch a falling knife, folks, on NQ. Uh, right now, our side's still bending down, and we, again, very high chance that after getting the bulls, their pink dev, it's just really what it is. Like, the bears early got theirs, and then the whole entire time, bulls got theirs. I mean, bears are going to want theirs, so it's just out of respect taking its turn. So, you know, you don't need to be trying to constantly average down average down you know dollar cost average on on a stock that's or future that's going downhill uh, i would personally just let it wait or come all the way down kind of really settle down around the low levels of support because it, when it's making a lower high and lower lows it's just the same pattern that's going to keep keep on following and we're about to potentially get death cross too by the way on nq so be paying attention on that line there um let me go down the list one more time. Duo to Akon. Akon got rejected, like I said, to watch at that 36 cent. Uh, the trend line got rejected there. Buru, uh, just downtrending. FLJ, not breaking $1 or below one, not interested. Yeah, just this is this is what we got so far. So um, I think just Duo is... F and FFIE is going to be my top two. I'm going to pull up FFI. I'm a little bit of a bigger fan on FFI just because it's a more of a meme stock and spend a little bit more um, more eyes on it because look at FFI is traded 216 million in volume. So clearly that's you know where a lot of attention is at this morning.
Okay, duo is unhalted. Let's see where it's at. Okay, it's back down. So I, I think, you know, it's really just going to be one or two stocks as usual, FFIE and duo for now. I think FFIE, as long as we're holding 275 support, we still have a shot for this to get a downtrend breakout and uh, get another possible pop. But $3 was a double top there. So that's going to be a little bit of tough luck for the bulls. I'm going to move my arrow here, indicating this was our 275 first stop breakout entry. So previous resistance can turn into a, well, it will become support. That turns into support. So you can use that as support line. Not looking good for NQ. We're already down 12 points for the day and about to get this death cross. 14 in May, testing 50 in May. About to get another new low here. Real. Watch FFIE 275 breakout here. Okay, FFIE approaching 285. We need to watch that area now breaking through. Um, 285 is a candle break line next. So watch for that FFI 285 candle break line. Worth watching. Uh, okay. <coughs> Duo is unhalted, but I mean, it's kind of dead in the water now. So. I mean, it could certainly come back up again, but it's just going to be really slow. I don't know. NQ's just been really just, we didn't, we just haven't seen um, 
good. I mean, you know, the trend still works, but like the ATRs just hasn't been as exciting. ATRs been below 15. Um, so you just have to make sure that you don't get stuck in the slowness. Sometimes a lot of times the slowness can chop people up. <sighs> okay. If I eat the 285, you can see here, you see how there's wicks here? This is what I'm talking about. You need to make sure you get that full body, start kind of getting that volume and then start. Now, for those that are like, well, I'm not sure if it's going to go. How do you know? Like, you know, if you're not sure, then start chipping in small positions. You don't have to go in a predetermined 1,000 shares for every single trade. That is not, you know, what you should do. You should have a amount that you're like comfortable that you're, you know, depending on the setup, depending on what your plan is. Okay. Like this looks like a pretty good setup. You're pretty confident then. Yeah. You should kind of start chipping in more. Right. Versus constantly playing and save the same number, the same, you know, uh, and, and, and learn to draw back, you know, you don't have to keep doing the, you know, same risk on a really confident setup versus non-confident setup. You're like, you're not sure then, you know, then throw in small amount, very small amount. And then when you see that confirmation, then throw out more. There's nothing wrong with adding more position into a winning trade, folks. Um, I rather see people add more on a winning trade rather than, you know, constantly adding on a losing trade. So, and in fact, maybe you should try that sometime, you know, maybe get into the habit of, um, when the stock is or any product is running up nicely and it's on a good bullish trend, don't be scared to add another position. Uh, if you know that there's more room to run, right. By looking at the, the trend line, the resistance, the, the daily chart, the, the resistance, you know, to draw those lines and instead of just ho holding the same price. Yeah. It could, you know, yeah, it could move your average differently, but you know, obviously you don't want to be buying, screwing up your average by buying near the top or, or near overbought territories. Like for example, here on futures and Q we've, we're very at a oversold territory. So if you miss this whole move on shorts and now you're thinking about, Oh, well, Dave says is bearish. Let's short now. This is a, uh, I mean, you, you can still maybe get, you probably going to get the pink death still, but it's just risky. You know, you're, you're, you're risking uh, a very small potential for a potential big move up. So your, your stop basically for a short is going to be, you know, you, you got all this room to run up versus a small re reward. Shoot. Excuse, sorry about that. I dropped the water bottle, but um, does that make sense? So like, so the, what, what can you do? Well, what can you do is either you go in very tiny position if you really want to trade still for that short down here, or so just wait it out. You know, and, and nobody say that you got to trade every single minute or two, right? So just be patient. We talked about this yesterday. I, I mentioned about uh, on this NQ, I like the five minute chart, right? For all my stocks, I just only use one minute chart time frame. You know, and I like the five minute because it gives me more, you know, gives me a better idea of not um, getting stopped out so easily, you know, by because the one minute is very, you know, volatile, you know, on the, on the, um, at least that I, that's what I think on NQ, but five minute gives me a little bit better eye view and be like, okay, that's fine. If it comes up all the way here, a lot of traders get spooked out. The moment it goes just straight wicks back up, you know, they're like, oh, shoot, I need to get out or whatever wicks down and they get out depending on the, the side they're on. But yeah, here comes the, the pink deadline. It's just like, you also got to look at the time remaining, right? Like let's say it's coming down here and there's only 30 seconds left or like 10 seconds left. You want to start covering before that that next um, next candle that potentially starts reversing back up. You know, so right now we're coming down nicely because we're in this channel, so we should be coming down to this this area here. Okay, so line to line, right? Line to line, line crack, and it's coming down to this line right here. Okay, and then we got the pink deviation piercing because we also had the death cross here. And then now it's getting a balance off that line. And now you also got to look to see if it's 
going to get a body cracking below pink deadline. Now, keep in mind, we didn't get a pink, uh, we didn't get a body above the pink deviation line. <clears throat> now, there are times where I'm, I make mistakes too, where, you know, don't get me wrong, I'm not perfect. Like, there's going to be times where I'm like, okay, like, you should wait for the confirmation. Say, say, say you, um, like you short it here, right? Um, that's that's great, but you know your your cover should be when you start seeing that. At least for me, the way I work is I start covering when I start seeing the Feynman Hikanashi on the on the futures here. In this case, for example, getting a body above that means that oh shoot, now this is becoming support. Now the next resistance is only going to be a deviation two line. Now that wasn't part of my game plan, right? So then that that wasn't your game plan. You need to start exiting. But what do most people do? They um they don't, and that's hard because even you know good traders they 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 have the slight ego that they're like oh I can make it still, and then they don't do what they say. So at the end of the day, the days that you are most green and every time you're consistent is every time you listen to your rules and you follow the discipline. So if you can do that consistently, then you're gonna get that consistent results, right? But there's gonna be days where you might not be, you know, it's all depending on the market conditions. It could be depending on your personal condition um, that you have to adjust accordingly. So uh, very nice balance here. I think we kind of got the very bottom of the barrel there for now. And we're starting to wedge out here. I think we're starting to see a little bit of buyer's potential coming back in. Um, if we can get that solid uh, break back above this line and then I would be even more bullish if we see the RSI actually curling up right now I'm still a little bit uh, not too bullish just quite yet until I see this line breaking back above because it could be just a little wick here and then start flushing back down right all the way to this line it can happen you know and this plus this this is not really if you look at this line here we still got a long ways to still pop up before it gets rejected again so I think we're still until I see the RSI and plus this 18644 breaking, I'm going to sit on my hands and kind of my mind is still on the bear side. All right, FFIE here for stocks. We have this lower high here, right? We're waiting for this to break out. By the time it does, you need that 285 candle break. And we should be able to see a nice breakout. Look at the daily chart. We have a lot of, um, a little bit more room here. So. I wouldn't be surprised if FFIE continues to run, uh, you know, into next week as well. If this continues to keep closing, you know, higher lows and higher highs here on the daily, because it's it's constantly doing that. I wouldn't be surprised if it already went from you know fifty cents to one, one to two, two to three now, and then what, three to four and four to five. I, you know, somewhere in the fives, I would kind of watch out. I would probably also watch to see if there's any, which we call it, any um, offerings or on the table. I, I mean, I wouldn't be surprised if there is because of how much FFI has been pumped up. Like, if you notice yesterday, there was a lot of offerings on the small caps, meaning I think. I mean, market conditions aren't that pretty right now, and there's not much act. You know what I mean? So I think they're just ready to dump it all down whenever they get an opportunity for a for a pump like that. And you know, people that are holding FFIA, they're they're just riding this meme stock craze wave. You know, right now, look, look at FFIA. Look at this company. It has negative cash. Like they're they're they there's a very high chance that they could drop an offering on FFIA. This company is not good company. <laughs> It, it, it's terrible. I didn't, I didn't even look at it until just now because, I mean, I had to because yesterday I've, I've noticed a lot of offerings happening. So I was like, oh, we, we might be seeing that offering time come in here for a lot of stocks. But, yeah, man, we'll see. I mean, Friday is known to be also a tricky day for people that, I mean, nobody wants to hold into the weekend. So nice pop here, guys. Beautiful uh, bullish move back up. So, like I said, this starts breaking, then uh, it's going to start moving back up towards the, the 14 EMA. Watch that RSI confirm confirmation to see how high it's going to 
come up. I mean, we are going to see a bit of resistance though here again at 656 to about that, the, the 50 EMA there. So the, the, the 14 EMA and the VBAP's pretty relatively close by here. <laughs> So notice how, you know, overall body held here at 18,637. We'll wick down into the pink dev, and now we are um, moving back up here. But um, the next trick is going to be if we can really kind of wedge out of the downtrend line here, or if we're going to just kind of get hit again and then pull back down, which is probably the likely the case. But I'm watching the RSI in the next uh, 50 seconds here. <clears throat> so it looks like another salt into the VWAP near 14 EMA, which is not surprising. Although keep in mind, this is relatively more bearish than bullish still on NQ. So, you know, you got to lock in whenever you get an opportunity for a jump like that. You know, you can't just expect, oh, let's now time to go to the pink dev line. No, you got to sell something before because this whole line, this trend is bearish. So anytime you get a little swimming up, um, you better, you know, you know, get back up and take a, you know, take that air, take that big breath before getting plunged back down. <clears throat> All right. So next candle, we are looking good on the RSI. So it's opening up. Higher lows, I uh, like to see this line become now support into this line here. So that is another 10 point move here, 45 to 55 room. Uh, the only thing you do need to keep in mind is there's a 14 of VWAP that is blocking right now as a strong resistance area. So if the bulls can push through that, then we should come up, test this area of the trend line. And then depending on continued higher lows and higher highs, we should be jumping back up towards that pink deadline at 18.675 line. But let's take a step-by-step. -step. First is first, this 45, 44 area needs to become support. Okay. <clears throat> Oof, yeah. You still have a full three minutes and 50 seconds on that. But look at that wig. Technically, every time it pops is technically lower highs, lower highs. And we have another shot for this, like I said, to come all the way down here. So we do need to keep that in mind. I think this, this wig could still come back up here, but let's see. Okay, uh, uh, FFIE coming back up to 285, y'all. Pay attention, 285 candle break. 325, I'll pull right now. Good to see ATR getting a little bit better. BFS, WLGS, BSDR. I think a con starting to make a little breakout. We talked about this is on our watch list. A con. Wow, look at that. That thirty-five line, right? The, the thirty-five uh, trend line breakout to the thirty-six. This thirty-six just got a ten cent pop here on a con. I have a line at, there's a line at 48 resistance there. So that's a very nice pop. If you were paying attention to this breakout trend line, resistance line, that was very nice there. Con's top second gainer. 
Duo, I, I think Duo's just not quite dead yet. It's still making a little bit higher low off at 200. So I, I would not lose hope just quite yet on Duo if you're, if you're still in on this. A minute and 20 seconds to go until the next candle. Right now, not looking good for NQ. NASDAQ still down. And back to the pink deadline again. So this trend line obviously start cracking with a lower high. Trend line is bearish. The only thing that was a one bullish signal was just RSI. So you have to kind of outweigh it, right? So you have to give your more reasons why you choose that side of being more bearish. Well, because it's, first of all, downtrending, lower highs. That's two already, you know. The Scott Death Cross, that's three. It's got rejection into the 14 EMA and the VWAP, that's four. I mean, you know what I mean? Mark is red. I mean, what, what, you know, you have so much more bearish signals. You can't just, well, the RSI curled up, Dave. Why didn't it, it go down? Well, you can't just rely on one indicator. Otherwise, why aren't you just using one indicator and trade off that way? But then you guys have all these other EMAs. Like, what's the point then? If you're, if you're not utilizing all of it and then make your best probability of what's the best method, of, of what best, best trade, what's the point? Just get rid of everything and just have level two then, you know, or um, for some of you guys just want to use the 14A, then use the 14A. I have traders that just have one indicator and that's it. You know, some people just like to use one indicator like the 10A and then, well, this 10 EMA extension, I'm going to get out and I'm not short. Sometimes they just do, do that. So it all depends on, you know, I think at the end of the day, though, just explore and then figure out what you think is the best method for you that works the best. So that's why in the beginning, you're going to kind of go through the trenches and figure out, okay, this doesn't work. This works for me. This doesn't. And then eventually over time, you just narrow it down and make it simple. And then you, there you go. You have your system that you like the best. That makes the sense most to you. <clears throat> That's why it doesn't work when you just like, oh, this guy says he has his three-step proven system. Okay, yeah, you can try it, but you know, at the end of the day, if it doesn't work for you and it's not your style, and it's not your style, maybe you can take one bit of it and then make it into your own, which is what you should do because again, everyone's personality and characteristics and their mind thinks differently. All right, so now here we go. Still lower high, lower highs. And so what, what do you think most likely is going to happen? Well, most likely it's going to make another lower low all the way to this line. I think it's on track to do so here at this rate. Because, I mean, we're we're not looking good here for the bulls. Um, don't <laughs> just one thing to I, I will say is we really haven't seen a, a full body below the pink deadline. Okay, so <clears throat> I, I wouldn't expect the deviation two line until you do that. You see that first. So uh, right now we're on track. It's better, but that's really the next big thing that I'll be watching here next. I'm trying to really narrow this thing down. ACBC, 
activa. En general, en general. Let's be at that. Okay, we got less than one minute now on the next candle coming up for NQ. The, the pink deadline for the, the pink that did not crack yet on the body side. So, you know, I, I, that's why I didn't want to keep shorting into this. This is a suicide. You know, you're, you saw already a wick into it, poke and bounce like this much, bounce to your uh, wick, bounced up already again. So, like, how many more beat ups do you need to learn your lesson? So but I, I'm going to wait and we're still on the over. You're really kind of low on the R side. I'm going to wait. Best thing to do is wait until, unless you want to just gamble, but you know, I, I don't want to do that. So I'm going to, especially I hate, I have to make sure Fridays is, you know, for me, otherwise my weekend's not going to be great. Like that's like, you know, just personal thing. I'm sure it's a lot for most of you guys, right? If you guys ended Friday on, on a red note, what happens? You have this tingle like, ah, I got to trade tomorrow. Well, guess what? News for you. There's no market that's not open tomorrow. <laughs> so, you know, what can you do? Well, you just have to go. You can't trade. Go do something else. And then Sunday too. But I don't really know how many people actually trade on Sunday for a futures market because it does open up like, what, 6 p.m.? But not not really my thing. I'd rather just wait till Monday. So Yeah, I think we're starting to wedge back out. I think uh we're starting to look a little bit better for the bulls here. So I do like the bulls here uh taking back charge to the 14 May again. So I'm gonna be looking for that line again. RSI start to wedge back up here as well. So, yeah, I think this is looking a little bit better. Also, we're only down like 10 points now. So there's a good shot for this to go red to green move. And SPY is starting to kind of recover just a little bit. So maybe NASDAQ might try to follow. So we'll see. Wow, AKN. Uh, where'd it go? I just heard AKN, but let's see. Why isn't it on the Guinness list anymore? That's so weird. Anyways, look at how much it's up right now. 56 cents there, so. Man, uh, looks like bulls just can't get it back up right now. No, I'll have to wait. Still got two minutes left. DFS. Not bad on AKN. Just running the 10 you may still. <laughs> Let's 
think there was like a what 48 cent resistance line i think i saw 49 and then they just pierced that and that's why i just got another big another 10 cent pop to 59 so this is pretty impressive here for for this little micro penny penny guy Got about a minute left here before the next candle on on uh, NQ. I think if NQ uh, kind of still holds this higher low here, I think they got a shot to move back up towards you know this upper zone here next, uh, depending on how the RSI is looking. So it's already kind of starting to set up a little bit here. I think it might be a doji in the next candle. If it opens up above that, that'll be good for that. Because I do, I do think bulls. It's it's technically bulls' turn. So I think you know the bears already got the pink death touched like three times already. So you know, it's just kind of now between the pink death to the the V wap. So the pink death already touched. Well, let's get back to the V wap and the V wap roll. If that happens, we'll go from there. Twenty seconds left. AKA and still riding the 10 EMA. So I would just pay attention to 10 EMA for us. 10 EMA bull flag set up for AKN. You guys are um, loving that or not. I need to really wedge out here. Okay, so nice pop up to that line just now. <clears throat> there it is, nice pop on up. What was that, 14 EMA now to the VWAP area there next. So like I said, just be on the lookout right now. I'm going to actually draw this line on the RSI as well. I'm going to gonna keep my eyes on this level here, depending on how this RSI sets up next. So nice pop out of this line. This line just, like I said, watch for this area to get a nice boost up towards the VWAP here. There we go. <clears throat> Okay, to the VWAP now, uh, and uh, it's coming up towards that upper upper trend line, by the way, too. So, um, Nasdaq pretty much testing at the neutral zone again. The question is, are we going to do a red to green move, or are we going to just pull back down here again? Mainly, I'm going to be watching the RSI at this point to get myself a last confirmation here to start determine whether this is going to really wedge out or not. So we're at that point where traders should try to lock in into that area if you have another batch. Okay, so we're testing that trend line literally into the uh, the bullish neutral zone here again. Nasdaq trying to go green right now. Spy is already kind of in the green as well. So let's see what happens here in the next one minute, 40 seconds now. 
definitely the test of that trend line here is uh, going to be a sell point here, resistance. Now we just need a up into the view app already happened. Now we need to settle down and then wedge out here to the, and then we'll go to the pink deadline again. So what number was that? That was about 53. Uh, looks like we have Nosferatu mentioning MBY, 20 cent break. If anyone's interested in that, you can keep an eye on it. Um, you know, if a 20 cent decides to break, I mean, you might get a room towards 24 before that next resistance. And then the 200 EMA on the daily is showing around 27. So you have a little shot at that little area there. There's some scalping opportunity there. Okay, 25 seconds to go until I'm watching this zone here on the R side and see if it's going to pop up or not. Three seconds. Let's see the next handle. Okay, so we wedged out. So I think we got a good shot for the Bulls now taking their shot here. We just need to confirm to make sure that this candle really does continue to push up out of this downtrend line. So they're they're doing a good job here, right? Why? Higher low, higher low. They're opening up now to a higher support, like we mentioned at eighteen six forty four was what we wanted to see pop from there as well. And now to this line at 18.655 and then 67 to the 75. <laughs> <coughs> this line is showing me at 55 or 56. So next line should come up based on this way uh, of trading here. Okay, there's 56, just touched. Okay, now we pierce through this and we should be able to see that bigger move on up. Just don't wanna see that um, wick I need to see that full body next. So overall, doing a good job here for the Bulls. Oh, look at that. Look at that, guys. Akon just got a offering. Look at that. Akon, I told you since yesterday, I noticed a lot of offerings happening. You better be careful. Even these little rats are getting uh, offerings. <clears throat> Watch out for offerings today, including... FFIE as well. <clears throat> just want to give you guys a heads up. Look at that. Just came straight back down to where he started. <clears throat> okay, looking good for the Bulls here uh, on, on NQ. I like the their confidence the bulls are showing spies up in the green Nasdaq's back in the green so I think we're it's our turn here for the bulls
Um, RBW, look up. Look at, I just replied to it. It literally says in the chat, bro, Akan, announced registered direct offering. <laughs> read, read, bro. <clears throat> so so now we wedged out uh bulls are back in control i explained the r side here as well that should give you guys that confidence to you know uh expect the respect from the bear side to push it up towards the pink deadline so let's take a step by step again uh, the easiest way to profit here is just stick to the line of line uh, and then utilizing that the pattern today is just deviation to deviation one line here. So uh, this line now is going to have to be support next. Uh, you only got 28 seconds. Wait for the next candle. Hopefully it does open up relatively around here and pushes it up towards this line at 67 into the pink deadline. Makes sense? So that's what we want to see. <clears throat> So yeah, I, I'm going to say for my stock guys, please be careful on FFIE today with a lot of offerings that's been happening overall this week. That's what I've been seeing. If you've been paying attention on the stock chat with all these offering news. Um, so yeah, I mean, one thing that's that's kind of sad, actually, a, a micro penny stock to, to, to drop an offer. That's how the desperate they are right now. So and imagine FFIE with no news and they're like, well, holy moly, like our company, our, our, our trash company is getting pumped up thanks to the retail traders with this meme stock craze. And when that is over, it's just gonna get dumped all the way back down. So what does that mean for the short sellers? Well, be ready, get ready. Obviously the timing is important because a lot of them thought, you know, maybe $1 break was a good short or $2 break was a good short, but FFI eventually pumped all the way to three. So. They might they might not drop it today, but it's just something you need to keep in mind right now. I think it's just uh they're they're thirsty. All right, looking good, guys. Look at that. We got a next line here at 67. Ding ding ding. Hold uh good job if you did. So hopefully you guys are following along nicely here, line to line. And then the next bonus cherry on top is the uh the pink dev line. So as long as we're as long as you're sticking to the protocol. And just taking good entries and good exits, then we're we're gonna finish green today, and we we're gonna take a nice little reset this weekend. Uh, go back to our trading uh review sessions. Uh, kind of again. Uh, my my job, my goal is to get the you know previous recording this week for those that missed it or you were here and you want to go back and listen to it again. It, it's it's that's the job for me this weekend is to get that up ready so you guys can start watching it over the weekend all right and, and as you guys go back and play and watch it again you will you should be able to see oh like wow i can't believe it like this whole entire market this week has been like this and this and that and and then you go back and you're like wow like there was really no reason for me to have traded like this or something like you know and so that way you prepare for next week and then you're like, wow, okay, let's see how, again, Monday comes. Monday is usually the day where we just kind of dip our feet to get the tone, right? Get the feel for how the rest of the week potentially could go. So, and look ahead on the calendars too, guys. You know, today, <clears throat> Friday, we just didn't have anything much going on. Next week, we do have, you know, major U.S. economic reports and Fed speakers, Right. So starting on uh main main thing that we need to watch out next week is probably going to be Wednesday. Wednesday, we're going to probably, I think Monday and Tuesday going to be fine. There's nothing really going on. Just going to be a lot of bunch of Fed speakers speaking throughout the day, which we don't really need to be really alarmed. But Wednesday is a Fed's May FOMC meeting. So that's that 2 p.m. mark where, you know, that means that a lot of children are going to be cautious next Wednesday. Right. Um, and then, right, maybe depending on what, you know, the FOMC min minutes come out uh, afternoon, then 
it starts kind of moving back up again. And then Thursday is going to be another wild day. Thursday, 8.30, and initial jobless claims. That's going to be where future NQ is going to be kind of wild. So we need to keep that in mind. That's when, you know, if you're on the right side, you can make a lot of money on Thursday. So just kind of like, you know, look ahead for the whole week. Plan ahead. Don't just go day by day and be like, oh, well, I'm a day trader, so I could just look at only day by day. No, day traders look at, you know, I would say just look at the whole week. Plan ahead. And there's a pink deadline. Again, respecting today's a pink deadline to the pink deadline. Pink deviation touched. Pink deviation line touched. Back down to the pink deviation and back up to the pink deviation. Also pay attention to how, like, you know, when SPY was starting to move up to the green, NASDAQ followed, right? We don't care about Dow Jones because most of the stocks that we trade are all listed on the SPY. And that's, that's what we need to pay attention on, not really Dow Jones. Not Dow Jones is just... So... All right, so we got that now coming up to cherry on top right here. Let's kind of fix our uh, our side here. Last our side was up towards... Uh, yeah, we've been seeing some resistance just a little before the... Uh, the 70 RSI level there. So that should be around 66 to 67. Okay, so a good area to kind of keep our eyes on to see how this area works. I think it's going to be a good area to look for a little pullback as well. Okay, so this line right here is going to be tough. We're going to need to push through. Now, keep in mind, this candle is still higher lows and it is still bullish. So we probably should push it up potentially. And when we do, we're probably going to come up towards that uh, earlier high at free market, nine, nine o'clock high, which the line is going to be sitting around this 18,683. So bonus money could still be hitting here all the way up to the 18,691 label line. By that time, I think the deviation two line should be around that line anyway. So uh, right now we are more bullish. Why? The market's green. RSI is bullish. Trend line's bullish. We broke out of the downtrend line. 14 may curl. So once again, if you did not cover here on the short side and you stayed bearish for too long, this is where you go messed up. You got to quickly realize, hey, the herd is shifting. We're going from bullet, or we're going from bearish to bullish. We went from red to green. So if you don't quickly change the sides and you're still being stubborn and just keep telling yourself, well, no, Dave, like I'm just going to keep fighting the trend. I can do this. Well, no, you don't want to fight the trend. Never fight the trend. Otherwise, you're going to... Do you want to go through the pain the whole time? No, I'd rather just, you know, admit that it's, you know, no more bearish. Well, just cut it off and then start fresh. Ride the new train. <clears throat> Ride the new wave. So what are we looking for next? Well, technically, based off on today's deviation, the deviation line, the respect should be right here, right? We should be seeing that pullback. Because of this resistance line, the pink deviation technically just hit. What we what we talk about here is if this area, this line becomes support. So once again, a lot of people love to assume. Let's buy at the breakout here, guys, because we're so close to coming up here. No, yes, everything is bullish, but you always got to still watch out for the confirmation of resistance breakout levels. Good area to sell into, though, right? <clears throat> so if you just bought right there, you just got flushed. When you could just wait until the seller sell and then get a pullback as close to, ideally, I like to see this pullback here at 18.655 again, this area, maybe a wick to 14 May is a bonus, but around there is more safe, I'd say. And then get the people covering there. And then this is near the trend line. And then you start kind of starting to wedge back up higher lows. Look at that. Wait for that pullback. Don't be in a rush. Be like, oh, well, with this line, well, no, let's, you know, that's a big resistance area. So try to grab um, while 
you know, we're in the bullish trend as low as possible. That the timing is very, very, you know, crucial, right? So anyways, now we got to what? Break the label line back, 18667. So this area is going to be tough because, you know, the range, the reward is a little bit thinner than usual. Uh, we we like at least 10 point move. Right now, ATR is looking better and better. So 16 points now coming up. Uh, in the meantime, for stocks, I know it's been a little bit quiet today, but Duo is waiting for the unhold at the 1041. So at 1041 and 45 seconds, you're going to look for Duo for a what? I think Duo has a shot for two plus, like I said earlier today. Why? Because the stock's already up over 300%. Usually stocks that does that, you might as well see a lot of that times go 500%. So Duo is one of those stocks that could still blow up further. Now, when I say it could go 500%, please don't just be like, well, let me just YOLO. He said 500%. And if it doesn't work out, I'm going to point his fingers to him and say, well, you said 500%. Obviously, no one here does that, but just in case. <laughs> All right. What we need to do is what? At the end of the day, still got to respect the support resistance line. So what is this? Duo 175. All right. We want to see continued higher lows and higher so higher highs, meaning support levels need to be getting built up higher. So for example, if you've ever watched Bobby the Builder growing up, right? Bobby the Builder, you want to lay brick by brick. Okay. Meaning brick by brick continues to build higher lows and higher support levels. And then it gets taller, it gets higher, right? So if you zoom out and duo, like I said, we do end up, uh, it's a little hard to see on the trade ideas here, but let me see if I can, uh, 175 to 181 has been though a little bit resistant. So you always want to go back and double check here because that was back in last year, September high around that level until it flushed all the way down to this bye-bye birdie level. So uh, if we can break that 180, yeah, then we should be able to see that two plus, $2 range first. So just... Only thing is, it's, you know, it's in an awkward area here, the way it's shaping up, because every time it pops, the smart buyers, I think smart traders are going to be what? Constantly buy every time it pulls back down to this trend line, because they buy, they sell into this trend line. They pull back by, they sell into this trend line. They pull back by again, they're going to try to sell into the 181, I think. So, so just again, FFIE. Still that mean craze stock, just I would say with this one, go in with some hard stops, folks, because of being a Friday with recent offerings and this stock does have offering on fall as well. Be, uh, so be be going in and trade it with, with no fear by having that stop loss set. So I just don't want to see anybody on my team getting rug oh my gosh dave I, I i didn't have a stop and this thing flushed all the way down back to one dollar you know what i mean they had a shelf registration on s3 uh on august 20 of last year so they amended it in august as well and they had the 424b5 form the next month following as well for the primary offering so yes they can drop the offering anytime so higher low still, we got the 18667, and then you got the 18674, like I said. Good area if you want to, you know, still scalp. If you took a, you know, a grab down as low as here is what I think I mentioned to you, right? As low as here, because at 14 May, and this line's the closest here. So now we can use this line at 18663, because that doji just formed right there, right? And now it's opening up right in the middle of that doji. That's your support line. And now we need to make a higher high. If it does not make a higher high, it will be a lower low. And then we're going to see that thing potentially cracking the trend line and going back downhill. Uh -oh. So for my future traders, what do you think we need to kind of pay attention on next? Um, another line that I would put is the RSI at around 50 to 51. 
around I'd say 50 to 51. So look, maybe like 50 somewhere, let's just say 57. Why? Because you know, if we kind of go back here, this was an area that it bounced, became a little bit of a bounce support area there. Ever since this area broke through, we got a big surge back up towards this RSI resistance. So we have a little bit of this room here to make sure if it does hold above this, and we still have some room here. So, you know, again, I'm just um, going to use that for extra support. Now we are, like I said, this doji here and then opening up here, that's your new support. And then technically it needs to make a new higher high, but you only have less than one minute. So, um, you know, let's see if it pushes up here in the next 50 seconds. So uh, I would say, depending on how this, I, I think the next candle is a an opportunistic candle because it, either it hits a lower high and becomes resistance and you short it, <clears throat> or you start seeing that area start breaking through and it becomes a poor and get ready for the next setup. Okay, coming up towards the new, um, not the high of day, but, you know, well, technically it is from the market. Well, no, the market opened up at 9.30. Well, here, technically, if we're going by the stock market time, 9.30. So, yeah, this area here. So, you always want to look at that opening, around that opening uh, high. So we're we're you see that how we're kind of around that area right now at nine thirty high here at this candle, so we're we're, you know, in a area where we need to break through that for us to see that potentially uh the pre market high up here. So if you look at the room it has from the nine thirty mark, eighteen six seventy two to the high was eighty six. So you got about what like a maybe 14 point move there, 15 point move room. Plus, you know, most likely if this is on a bullish trend here, because which our slash still is, you know, this bulls might be the first ones today to get their deviation to line, which is also going to most likely later in the afternoon going to present if you're sticking around for a nice flush back down to the deviation to line as well. So. Okay, testing that high today. Duo just got a uh, unhalt, I believe. Or got halted down, actually. So actually got spiked up all the way up to $2, which was what we talked about. It's going to get to $2, most likely. But it's got to wake into $2, meaning shorts came back in as buyers sold into that 2. Uh, so extended off the 10 as well. So back down at 10, let it cool off, get back in at a, a more, you know, uh, solid support level, I would say right now, the closest support line we need to hold is the 181 line there. So watch that 181 line and then back to two and then two dollar whole dollar shuffle and then continue to move on up. But so pleases. So now you got FFIE again at 285 and then three plus again. Okay, now NQ back to NQ. We need to get this third touch breakout. Why? We got once, twice. This third touch breakout NQ really needs to go. So uh, NQ, third touch, breakout line at what? The 18.675 line. Worth watching, okay? Now, what happens if it does not get a third touch breakout or third uh, or triple top? We're watching. So it could be either bullish once the third touch breakout does happen in this candle. If it doesn't, it'll become a triple top. And then what happens? We'll be ready for it, what? Uh, flush back down. So let's see. Like I said, crucial candle here. Opportunistic candle or whatever. So this is uh some some of you may have already started, but I rather not have started until I get that confirmation. Because once again, look look what's going on. You see that 14 MA starting to creep up very close to that 50 MA. The question is, we don't know if it's going to be actually a golden cross and then pop up it could just be a little kiss and a kiss of death and then flushes back down curls back down all right ffi coming up to three dollars again 
You got 343 up pop now on FFIE. So get ready if it does break the three dollars here. Up 80 percent to three dollars is a strong resistance. Shorts are gonna want that. So be waiting for the confirmation, folks. Don't don't rush into three dollars because look what happened to duo. The whole dollar resistance is very popular on Fridays. Two dollar breakout into the resistance, wicks up and then flushes. Um, also FFIE just now got a little bit of wick and then pulls back. Well, don't be scared just now. As long as we're still high, higher lows, we don't want to see the higher low crack. So at this time from the 200 right here, we need to hold that. So it makes sense for traders to kind of have sold into that, to that area here as well because of, um, got a little bit of that higher high. So good for them. You always want to take in some profits at the higher, higher high every time it starts popping into it. Okay, and Q, here we go. This candle, we got 38 seconds left. Bulls are doing a good job still. Curious to see what the next candle really looks like. SGML, MTA, SMR, AFRT. Okay, uh, we uh, technically still wicks here. This candle, I mean, overall, this still has a shot because it's still opening up higher lows, but we're getting kind of a little tight here, guys, on this area does that make sense we, we're kind of tight between support and resistance so it really depends here if the bulls can kind of really pierce through that pink deadline if not bears are going to be like angry they're like well listen it's our turn <laughs> and so i have um yeah tight Tight, tight area here. Um, we missed a freaking stretch break. Who cares about that at this point? It's fast money Friday. Let's make our money, you know, GTFO <clears throat> for the weekend. So clearly we know this area is a very strong resistance, 18675. So that is an important line. Duo. Did it get halted again? Yeah, I know. Why didn't why did it make a noise there? 183. Or maybe it got unhalted. Okay, yeah, FFI is still good. Still higher lows. Yeah, man, that duo though. I think if duo does get that um 195 one more time. Uh yeah, I, I would watch that 195 area next on a duo because duo is it's it's got a nice um volume today. So this thing could still be the uh hot hot runner. Just I just think you know it's smart today on a special day, like you just need to learn how to lock in something that way you're always finishing the day something in the green instead of like getting blown out because you were too greedy. If I eat back to the one, uh, 285 line again, if uh duo ever does get that breakout 195, be on the lookout for that. Fortunately, what happened? Well, no third touch breakout. Oh, 
on the NQ. So it's a tight stop back into the uh, support. So unless you wanted to go for that quick, you know, little scalp right there from the 74 to this line, you could be, you could have done it. But the major big move is going to happen once you see the candle start wedging out and then cracks this line that's 18667 because remember this is a strong support line that's why it's labeled for a reason i left it there from the past so this line right now is a strong support for uh the folks and then we need to see if we can get that bigger move Hey, we're getting a little bit of a, a red vibe here, like, you know, red signal here. Like as in lower highs are happening and the uh, trend line crack looks like it's about to start. So be ready for that flush, folks. Look at that flush. It's a doji and a flat top red trend line crack, lower highs, RSI is just wedged down. So we are on the bearish mode here, folks. Spy and NASDAQ starting to slip with just a little bit again. We only have three minutes till 11 a.m., folks. So start cleaning things up right now. Duo is um, still something we will be watching closely for that 195 break. Later, if it does happen, so be on the lookout for that. Let me know if you guys have any questions as we start wrapping up our day.
So again, deviation to deviation, one line day, uh, you got the pink dev and now the bears are gonna bat, is coming back in eventually. They wanna see that this line crack, VWAP, and then line to line to the deviation uh, area. So be on the lookout for that. So lower highs and lower lows. So hopefully you guys were able to notice that third touch breakout did not happen. This was an opportunistic candle to be what? Bearish. Because third touch candle, this needed to break out. This was a wick, finish, it did not close above. Wick, wick, wick. And then this made a lower high, made a doji, flat top red, bear, bear, bear flag, red flags, red flags. And you had that opportunity to take that short trade there. Uh, down so we are on the bear strand for those that are looking to trade till after you know in the you know 11 a.m or whatever uh do your thing but i am going to now sign off and call it a day in the green so thank you and have a nice rest of your weekend all right team take care everybody god bless you all and thank you for letting me serve you looking forward to serving you guys on money monday i will upload all the live recording sessions this week so you guys can take care and watch that this weekend have a good one stay safe and uh yes see you guys next week